Bring us in, babe. Welcome to Coco, Coco Caliente. Caliente. Would you like you like go eh, like it's like Halloween? Nah, <laughs> it's more like I'm trying to sing, but I'm really bad at singing. Oh. So, so you think I'm better at singing than you? A hundred percent. Which is so crazy because all my friends in college, well. I had one friend in college. <laughs> Mar- Everybody said. <laughs> Everyone said. <laughs> Mariah, she told me I'm tone deaf and that I'm the worst singer ever. So if I'm better than you, it makes me feel good. Uh, Mariah, you're absolutely wrong. And I don't even think she listens to the podcast to know. Yeah, because in church you tell me, you sound good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I really think I really think you have a better voice than me. And you have a really good singing voice. So. And I think he has a better voice than me. So anyways, we're not going to sing for you guys. Let you decide. Because uh, <laughs> I just kind of woke up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did wake up. Um, but we want to start this. Uh, this is a very special episode, I think, because this is our first Amazing Race uh, yeah. episode, right? I, yeah, and the premiere was last night. Oh, uh, yeah. And we had a big party. So um, I kind of tried to rewatch it this morning a little bit just so I could hear like some things. But I thought it was really freaking good. Yeah, I was excited. It was, it was awesome. They did a great job. And mm-hmm. man, props to CBS and the Amazing Race team for... Yeah, all that footage. <laughs> Just imagine a cameraman following you around for 16 hours and you're just one team and they have to go through 11 cameras of footage like that. On top of that, they have the cameras at the end of the pier Mm -hmm. and all the other cameras in the sand and cameras at each of the competitions and Phil and all this stuff. And it's just like the drones. I'm like, wow, you guys. It almost, I kind of wish it was two hours. I thought, I wish it was a two hour premiere. Yeah. Because I feel like if for a premiere... Luckily, we're all kind of known characters, but you really want to fall in love with the team. And when you see only like two minutes of them, it's kind of hard sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's like you got to be on there for a while to. That's why actually Big Brother. We're used to develop. Big Brother because it's like three hours a week, and you have live feeds, so you really know like everything about the person yeah. you're rooting for. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we really, we really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. We did. And before we get into that, because mm-hmm. there's definitely a lot that we want to talk about, um, and we'll have some special guests today, uh, we want to get into our reviews because we really appreciate you guys going on uh, you know, iTunes and leaving us reviews. It really helps us and it really makes us feel great about what we're doing really drives us so nicole if you could i want you to go first today because to i first. have like four i'm choosing from so oh, i'm hoping you pick one i pick and it eliminates it to three <laughs> <laughs> there's so many guys so it makes our jobs like harder but easier you know because it's better than not having any right oh yeah no i'm so grateful there's so many <laughs> all right so uh, the title of this is uh, Feel Like I'm Listening to Old Friends. Hey, that's one that I picked by Anna Tori 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Anna Tori. It's a good one. First of all, hi from a fellow Michigander. I love, love, love this podcast. I have been following Nicole and Vic since their big brother days, and I'm so happy they started a podcast. All of the topics are so relatable, and when I listen, I feel like I'm listening to old friends talk. I love how down to earth and thoughtful they are. Thursdays can't come fast enough. Keep up the amazing work, Anna. Uh, and actually, it's Fridays now. Uh, she did that review before that information came out, but it'll be Fridays now. Thursday at midnight, but you'll be sleeping. So Friday, the episodes will come out uh, from here until just otherwise. till the amazing race is like done. Yeah, we'll let you know when we switch back to regular schedule. Um, okay, so I'll do Love Coco Caliente. I love listening to this podcast. I list. Oh, it's by Sam Mayor. Oh, Sammy Orlando, nineteen ninety seven. I love listening to this podcast. I listen to it while I'm closing at my job as a bartender in a movie theater. I love your special guests and I love your creative segments. I can see that you two do this podcast because you love spending time to get time with each other and want to do something for the listeners. Can't wait to see you on The Amazing Race. Yeah. Woot woot. So I did that one because it ended with The Amazing Race. So it goes in, <laughs> do you like that flow? That was good. That was yeah. hey, interesting. Good job, baby. But there's a lot of good ones. I want to read one more. All right. Go ahead. Um. Okay. This one... Okay, Silent Observer. This is from this is titled that from T Fon Day Not eighty three. I absolutely love y'all's podcast. I listened since day one and never thought I'd actually write a review, but I thought other people should know how great y'all are together. The chemistry between the two of y'all is so fun to listen to. I love Nicole's sweet attitude and Vic's full loud laugh. Shout out to another great person from LA. Yeah. Woot Woo! woot. <laughs> Thank um, you guys. Yeah. That that's really nice. Okay. Like I said, it's a it's a real feel good. But now skipping into this first episode, I yeah. wanna address first and foremost. Team Dum Dum. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know what? There could be a lot worse things that we could be called. So I think it's kind of cute when they show us like high fiving. That's like a flashback. What they called me in Big Brother sixteen. Like they showed me like just being an idiot. Yeah. In the background, but just having fun. So do you think we got called that? Because she had only seen us for like an hour previously. Of you know that. what? I don't know what it is, but I love being underestimated. Me too. And so if that's what you think right off the bat, then We're I'll... We're doing our job well. <laughs> that's how you play Big Brother. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll run with it. And and actually, fun fact, uh, like maybe a week before the this episode, you know, the premiere aired, um, Eliza, she messaged us, uh, Nicole and I in a group message and said, well, you know, I might have said some not so nice things about you guys. And so I just want to give you guys a heads up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I think we were kind of ready for it. Yeah. Um, but we didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I think it's kind of cool because being underestimated, like during when Phil was asking kind of questions when we're all lined up at the start line, mm-hmm. Victor and I did not speak because... I think the worst thing to do is be like, yeah, I'm going to be the greatest, and then you're the worst. Well, and the <laughs> irony of the fact is that the the three teams that they did show speaking, like making like a commentary that, you know, they're good yeah. or better or whatever, they ended up in the bottom <laughs> three. Yeah, it's just, it's <laughs> funny. It, it's, it's just editing gold, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but no, I think we were, at the start line, we were really, really nervous. You know, I was very intimidated. I knew that being a big brother player out of an amazing race teams and survivor teams, we did just kind of sit in a house, hang out, social game, and you and I were not fit because it was a very last minute decision type yeah. thing for us to be on. So oh, I wish I would have worked out. More. We didn't work out. <laughs> and yeah, so it, it was just a lot of pressure. Um, and you just don't want to go in there guns blazing thinking it's going to be all sunshines and rainbows. And, you know, then you get out right away. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Just um, be humble type thing. But it's good TV if you're not. <laughs> yeah, it makes for really good TV. But we'd rather not have that airtime and just like be a little <laughs> humble, you know, you know what? Mean. I know, no, I know exactly. Yeah, I feel what you like mean. you can really get the airtime if you really want to be like cocky and yeah, yeah. And that that was just a crazy start or mean. Too. I feel like mean people get a lot of airtime too. Yeah, that is very <laughs> true. If you're mean or if you're really cocky or whatever, if you're kind of like just if you can live with it after, it is what it is. Uh huh. Exactly. I just exactly. can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I yell at you a couple times throughout the race, a little bit. So yeah. we'll see, I mean, if that airs, but I don't, it's never been like super, it's just I'm not ashamed of it. Out of frustration. Yeah. Nothing, you know, nothing horrible. Pretty relatable, I'd say. Yeah. Like relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, something that they didn't show you guys is us running in the sand so many times to get the, the right take. Right. So by the time we were running off of the pier, I was already tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, and running in sand is really difficult, especially when you're already nervous. You got cotton mouth and then you, your body kind of freezes. You're not relaxed when you're doing oh, this. It was a long morning. And honestly, I'll be honest. And when I was digging in the sand, I wasn't doing crap. <laughs> like I was moving maybe the very top layer of the sand. I was, I couldn't even dig. I'm just like, <laughs> and when you found one, it was like, music to my ears i still i rewatched that this morning nicole nicole i got one i'm like oh my thank god because i was just gonna lay down (laughs) and what they also don't show is that you know you get that but then you got to run all the way like it's not like we were right there next to the yeah, sidewalk. Some questions we, were, how far did you guys We run? had to run in, mm-hmm. like into the sand, like into yeah. the beach, and then all the way back out to the street, like around a corner to mm-hmm. find the taxis to get to the airport. Yeah. So by the time we got in the taxis, we were drenched in sweat and full of sand. Like, yeah, and puffing we and puffing. got to the airport like fourth, which we were super proud of. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just kind of a quick ride. Getting healthy is always something that I'm trying to do. I'm constantly trying to work out, exercise, doing different workouts, and I've been using now OpenFit to do that. Mm -hmm. And so what OpenFit is, for people that don't know, is basically you have online access to a bunch of different workouts at any time. Like you can access it on your like web-enabled TV, which is what I do, or you can do it on your tablet, smartphone, or you can just view it from your computer. It takes the complexity out of losing weight and getting fit because they have so many different types of workouts. They have great trainers and classes. It's super simple. You can access it anywhere and anytime, and you can lose up to 15 pounds in just the first 30 days. 
It's pretty crazy. And one of the things that uh, they have on here that I think Nicole would like is uh, Extreme Bar. Yeah, I love bar. Yeah, with Andrea Rogers. And actually, mm-hmm. this Extreme Bar, it's 30-minute workouts, and you don't need a bar. Like, right. the bar is not I, required. I have, like, you. I got a ball, some weights, a chair, and a stretch band. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that that's really neat. So I want you guys to try it. I mean, there's always... There's always an excuse not to work out. So if you hop on it early and just stay at it, you'll see the results. So anyway, you can use my code or our code. Uh, it's called COCO, C-O-C-O, just like our podcast. And they'll get a journey personalized started for you. Uh, and they do a 30-day free trial membership to OpenFit where you can lose up to 15 pounds in 30 days. All you have to do is text COCO, C-O-C-O, to 303030. Again, you text COCO. C O C O to thirty thirty thirty. But um, somebody asked also about the chocolate shoe. Uh, like, what did, what was going through your mind? Because now we know you had the most attempts at the chocolate shoe. We didn't know. Yeah, I that was just so frustrating more mm. than anything because there's no way you can look at it and see which one's which. Right. There was only twelve in there that were actual I chocolate know. We sandals. Didn't, we didn't even know how many there were. Yeah, they they told you guys when you were watching the show, but when we got in there, they weren't like, oh, there's twelve chocolate sandals in here, mm-hmm. and you got to find them, you know. So yeah. it's just a guessing game, and you're just pointing them out. I mean, I was so pissed when Janelle got hers first try. Because I was like, no way. Like, what are the odds? Yeah. And then come to find out yeah, I'm there that's... 43 tries later to finally get it. Like, I, my teeth were hurting. I was frustrated. There was no rhyme or reason. I did. Like, when people are yeah. like, hey, why don't you just go down the line? Yeah. Well, that's what I ended up doing. Yeah. I mean, that's what I did. Because otherwise you'd forget which ones you picked. Exactly. That's the only – if you. but if it was on your first try and you just picked one and it was lucky – that's awesome. You don't have to use that strategy. But once you are over 10, I feel like, okay, which ones did I pick? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think when they brought you some shoes, you saw teeth marks in some of them. And mm-hmm. I'm sure people saw your teeth marks because you were biting them pretty uh, hard. So they're like, nope. <laughs> my teeth had to be super engraved. But then you still had to bite it if they brought yeah, it to you. Yeah. So Just to like make sure. Yeah, it's just... Because Tyler had it where he took a bite and he almost sent it back and then something broke off of it. Did you notice that? Oh, no. I, yeah, I and didn't. then he like, then he bit it again. He's like, oh, I got it. You know, because you're like this is so it looks like wood yeah i noticed that and it's kind of cool watching it back because we don't know what the other teams were doing we're so focused on ourselves so worried about what's going on with us that i don't know who's in first i don't know who's like having issues i don't know who got lost where Mm -hmm. so it's cool to watch like knowing that Rupert and Laura were first to get the clue. I know. That's so cool. That's, yeah. And then Chris and Brett were second, so it wasn't even race teams. Yeah, and exactly. And I would have I guesstimated Afghanimals got it first and Christy and Conlon got it fighting. second. <laughs> yeah. That fighting. Was, do you know that I just realized how smart the Afghanimals were for doing that? Because there was the Riley sisters, Tyler and Corey, Rupert and Laura, or no, I don't know. There was like four other teams and thank God they scattered because we would have been in bad shape at that mm-hmm. point because they all would have got the clue before us. Exactly. Thank you, Afghanimal. It's one of the only <laughs> times I'll thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. So it definitely – and it's just it's just crazy. Like there's so many things that as a viewer you're watching, you're like, why don't you just do this or why don't you just do that? And it's like – you can't. You're in a country. You yeah. don't speak the language. If somebody even does give you their cell phone to look up the location, it's in Japanese. I think the first leg was the wor- hardest for me because it just didn't know. I didn't have the flow and I didn't have the confidence. Well, and we just don't know. It's a culture right. shock too, yeah. you know? And so just all that and you're running down the street and I don't know, trying to get help but can't understand people and hoping for the best. And like you mm-hmm. said, you don't know where anybody else is. So you're having a hard yeah. enough time trying mm-hmm. to figure out where you're going to then – have to think, hey, am I first, second, third, yeah. fourth, you know, whatever. So what our kind of plan is is that we're going to have a team on every week and let us know feedback if you like this or whatever. It's not always going to be the team eliminated. It's just going to be a team that made an impression that that episode. Mm-hmm. So today we're having Art and JJ, and they're a team that we didn't really get to know because it was so quick. Yeah. Um. And so I actually am so fascinated by their journey because I found out last night on the premiere they got second place their first go. Yeah, that's crazy. And wow, like I'm kind of, I mean, no offense Art and JJ, but I'm so lucky you guys got out yeah. right away because you guys would have been a freaking threat. We already have enough threats in the, <laughs> in the game like for a race team to go first, that was like 
Uh, the only way that anyone else had a chance, I feel. And it was a breath of fresh air, right? Like yeah. nobody's invincible. You know yeah. what I mean? Like even if you've done this before, the chips can fall against you. And yeah. uh, and we didn't know what happened with them. Yeah. So, so sad about the cramp because that's something you can't help. Yeah. Um. So we're going to call them up today each separately and learn yeah. uh, learn about them. Yeah. We're going to give uh, JJ a call here first. Uh, and then after that, we're going to talk to Art, get their take on... Uh, the first uh, episode, right? The premiere. Yeah. And what was going through their minds. Yeah. Hey, it's JJ. Hey, this is Victor. Hi, JJ. It's hey. Nicole. Hey, how you guys doing? We're doing great. We're doing great. Um, I'm not crying anymore for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, well, I, I, I didn't even watch it. No, I haven't no, even watched really? it yet. No oh. yeah. yeah, man. I, I, I think Art did. Art, we were... We were, uh, you know, we always had really big um, <clears throat> parties the first time we did it, and uh, accumulated. We had like 500 people at our last viewing party, oh, and, wow. and, uh, and we were going to do it again. But you know, when CBS changed the the dates on us, Art was already had vacation planned, and he was up in Napa, oh. and uh, and everyone was kind of scrambling. So. Last night, my phone was blowing up, and I was just like, <laughs> "No, I can't. I just can't." I told my wife, "I let's just let's just record it. We'll watch it later. I just yeah. can't do it." Wow. So, but uh, yeah. So, you guys doing all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're doing we're doing good. Um, you know, we we're we're happy, I guess. Obviously, with the <laughs> with the first uh, the, with the premiere, and yeah, we just had a little good. premiere party last night, but it was we were kind of nervous because we've never been on a show that's been like pre-taped. And then it airs, you know, usually Big Brother's live. So, right. So, yeah, it's weird, like sitting and waiting for it to come on. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't see it. And, and, and of course, I got a bunch of feedback from people and, mm -hmm. and, uh, et cetera. And then, um, but, you know, when they ask you, how was the edit? Uh, right. Was it good or bad? The, when I, when we did season 20, um, I, I thought it was extremely fair. Yeah. Um, and it was like right on. That's who I was, all mm -hmm. good and bad and 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 different. That's just how mm -hmm. I was. So mm -hmm. sometimes you cringe, right? When yeah. you see things like, "Oh God," but yeah. you know, it is who you are, um, right? Under pressure, if, yeah, under pressure, and 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 uh, so I always felt good with the way it, the way I came out, mm -hmm. or or the version of it, which was true. Yeah, and 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 actually, that's what it's funny that you you know bring up you know your last the last time that you were on it. When when was that exactly? Uh, what year was uh, that? You know, we filmed it in two thousand eleven and in November. Mm. Okay, and um and then it aired in two thousand twelve, and uh, and it was great. It was the first time we've ever done anything like that, and and uh, obviously, and um, I just remember season twenty was uh, when we first did it. It was. Uh, a, almost magical in a sense that mm -hmm. we were in Santa Barbara and uh, in a winery in the hills in, in November during and all the foliage and we don't get that in California but on this winery it was foliage and and uh, like you would get in, in uh, Michigan where you guys are from and mm -hmm. and it was beautiful it was kind of majestic and it started and you know we'd never done it before so everything was so brand new and uh, yeah it was. It was surreal, actually, um, but uh, great memories uh, mm -hmm. all the way through it. Even this, even this has some great memories. It's just so much we missed out on. Yeah, um, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, but, so your first time on, I, I, you guys got second place. That is so like awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and just I, tell us like a little bit about season twenty. Well, season twenty was uh, an incredible cast of characters, to say the least. I mean, you you got to be with uh, one half of the Rachel, uh, the Rachel. We had Rachel and Brendan, and and mm -hmm. that was the first time that that I experienced that, and um, <laughs> you know that that area, and uh, and it was just a, a lot of personalities. We yeah. had a, a team from Kentucky called Mark and Bopper, and and uh, they were just. I mean, they were so loud, but they were so <laughs> fun, you know, yeah. it was just, yeah. it was great. So it was a real big cast of characters and, mm -hmm. and, um, and to go, it was very, we, like you said, we came in second, but we, you know, you ran the race from the beginning to end, which is grueling. I, in 21 days to travel that much with no sleep, I lost 15 pounds mm -hmm. in 21 days. It was wow. insane. Yeah. It was absolutely crazy. And then to go all the way to the end, and we had one challenge 
to finish. And um, at the time, Art and I were under the impression we were second or last, right? Because oh. we we got we got lost right out of the airport. We got lost, and uh, all the, all the nations we went to, almost everybody spoke English or a semblance mm. of English. We get to America, and our cab driver doesn't speak a lick oh. English. And I'm like, are you kidding me? How does this happen? <laughs> so we get lost for 45 minutes, and the whole the whole leg, we're like, I can't believe this happened to us. That we're this is how it's going to end, and we end up on this hill in in Hawaii where we got to ride a sled down. And we thought we were in last, and we were ironically, or uh, yeah, ironically, uh, in first. And we were in wow. first for over an hour. Oh wow. no and, way! Yes, and Gosh. Art took about an hour and a half to complete this sled ride. All he had to do was take a. It was a Hawaiian sled. It's very thin and narrow, but and Hawaiian warriors used to slide down the lava when it obviously was cool, but it was still kind of soft and they would ride down the lava and see if they can make it to the end. Um, and, but this was a really, a, a slow loping hill grass uh-huh. knoll yep. and art for whatever reason, couldn't do it. And, um, we were sitting there after about an hour, I was just like, dear God, can we just call this a day and just somebody <laughs> take us to the, the ending and oh, get over Oh, because you're with. thinking you're last, that's it. Like, why, yeah. why are you putting yeah. us through this torture? Yeah, and I was like, this is unbelievable. And then all of a sudden, I hear this woman's voice, and I'm like, no way, that can't be. It was Dave and Rachel who ended up winning it, and husband and wife. And, <laughs> and I go, I look up there, and I'm like, Oh, mother of God, that's Dave and Rachel. We're at first. Oh, and I yell up to Art, and I go, Art, we're... We're in it. And he goes, I know. And I said, well, then get your fat ass down the hill. Let's let's win this money. And um, he didn't, you know. And and I was at, I mean, I think to me that that capsulizes, um, encapsulizes the, the amazing race is you never know where you yeah. are. You're never you out don't. until yeah. you're out. Yeah, you, you just don't. That's right. very true. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen me talk about this company before. It's for women um, lively. It's if you're looking for bras. Before I went to Florida, I really wanted some cute like bralettes. And um, lively did that for me. So what they do is they kind of mix in um, comfort with like lingerie. So it's like lingerie. Get it? Like you're Mm, lounging. It's sexy, yeah? It's sexy and it's comfy, which is comfy (laughs) is more important to me. Okay. (laughs) Um, But you can choose from bralettes, t-shirt bras, there's push-up bras, there's your like no wire bras, which are the bomb. That's what I get. Okay. Um, But I do have, I did get the tomato red bralette, which is super cute. And I got the t-shirt bra, which is really comfortable. Um, so, but what's cool for them too, is you take a style quiz, they figure out what you like, uh, one price for all, all sizes. So, you know, they believe that it's a women empowering company. It's for women built by women. Oh, that's awesome. All women equal. Every price of the bras are the same, no matter what size you are. Cause sometimes oh. they change that. Oh, I didn't know Other that. companies. Yeah. So there's a good fit guide. And also if you start to fall in love with the company, like I do, you can refer a friend and for every friend that signs up. You get to receive 100 points, and that's $10. I mean, yeah. Oh, and it's, so, a, it's very affordable things, too. So 10 friends, 100 bucks. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so anyways, I um, really recommend them because it is comfortable, and that's what I value. And, uh, and they're really cute. And so for a limited time, get $10 off your first order by visiting wearlively.com forward slash Coco and enter code Coco at checkout. It's only available in the U.S. So the website is spelled W-E-A-R-L-I-V-E-L-Y dot com. And yeah, use code Coco. Did you guys really like not talk about it for five years? Yeah, we didn't talk about it at all. Oh. We, we, we did not. We didn't talk about it. It wasn't until we did. Uh, the Border Patrol has. We're both. Uh, watch commanders and board patrol and, and the board patrol union has a big um, a podcast that all the guys listen to. And it's mm-hmm. very popular and called the green line. And they asked us to come on and talk about that and other issues in board patrol and management. And we said, you sure. And it was about five or so years wow. later. And that's the first time we talked about it. And, 
and it was emotional. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we were talking about it, and we were just like, we just there wasn't anything to really say. Yeah. You know, you just it yeah. is what it is sometimes, mm-hmm. right. and right. Um, but it still stings. And I, I feel for Art um, mm-hmm. because we couldn't get down a hill, and then he couldn't get up a hill. Yeah, and, yeah. and it just it it it, it was tough. Mm-hmm. And I guess yeah, let's just fast forward to that. You know, really quick. I mean. Uh, I guess we can work backwards, but did when did did his cramp just? I mean, because he only sees so much, right? And they 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 showed like quick flashes, like when he got the cramp, and then the doctors came in, right? The medical, they started spraying his yeah, leg like and how all long that. Bef- how was he long? Trying yeah, how first? long before that happened? Well, you know, you got to go back to um, we we got lost in that bizarro world called Tokyo, and <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it, there's around. no signs and nobody knew anything. Uh-huh. So we were running, right? And yeah, yeah. I'm sure you guys did too. You just ran and ran and ran on foot. Mm-hmm. So we must have been running for an hour, two, three hours mm-hmm. oh. because we didn't stop. We didn't stop at all. Wow. So um, when we get there, we think, again, we think we're in last and um, he starts to go up and down the the slide, if you will. Yeah. Um, and he can't do it. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, can we just get this over with and just end this nightmare? Cause it was like, I was living flashback. Yeah. Flashback. And it was almost like whatever we would have dreamed up as the worst case scenario to be on the amazing race. It was, I was, I was living it in real time and I just could not believe the whole time I, I was sitting there, I, I, I could not believe this was happening because we had, we had ideas that, you know, it, it wasn't going to be easy. We knew we were going to run into hard problems and, but we would overcome them like we did before. Yeah. And, um, so he starts cramping up and he says, I can't do it. And I said, well, you're, you, you got to figure this out and <laughs> figure out a way. Yeah. And, um, and I'm looking around at the behind the scenes, right? The cameraman and, mm-hmm. and everybody and, and nobody's moving and nobody's like, okay, let's wrap this up. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I, I don't think we're the last team. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't. And I tell Art, I'm going to run, let's run back to the tent and see who's oh, still there yeah because you can see the costume stuff yeah you see the costumes and i go oh my god art we're not the last ones you got to get up there and he's like i can't my, i'm cramping up so bad i can't do it and i was like i don't know what you got to do but you got to do it mm-hmm. right yeah and he just couldn't i mean he was severe cramps like right. where debilitating and i was just it it was surreal and deflating and uh, frustrating and I was mad and art was mad and it was just, it was a terrible, terrible way to end our amazing race experience. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. It was, it was hard to watch cause it was just like, Oh, you wanted to, it's almost like I wish you could like tag your partner into doing things. Cause I mean, it's happened to me and Vic where it's just like, I can't do this. And right. I hate that you can't like help or you can't switch places. There's no, there's like no solution yeah. if they're literally, you know, cramped up on the ground. Besides, then you guys decided to take um, the penalty. How does that work exactly? Does it work like right from the start, the four hours? Well, yeah, you had it. It took. The, it was my decision because I I looked at art mm-hmm. and I and I, he was like, I can't do it. Right. And I was like, okay. So my thought process going through because I'm a a super fan of the show. I love, I've always mm. watched it. I love yeah. it. Okay. Um, That's cool. So I, I knew, I knew the procedures, I knew the rules and, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, okay, here's my, here's my thing. If, if my thought process was, if art can't do it, maybe somebody else can't do it. And he's never going to be able, like, I asked him, I said, do you think there's any way you can do this? And he's right. like, I can't do it. I said, okay, so let me, the the only re, the only op, the the only option for us was to take a penalty mm-hmm. with the hope somebody in two hopes in in hope that somebody would come and couldn't do it and then we would get the penalty and get ahead of them right. and squeak by and or there was something at the end like uh, the head to head. Yeah. And thinking maybe, okay. good, good, yeah. maybe there's a head to head. If there's a head to head, great. Yeah. The, whoever to, passes yeah. us has to go sit and they'll just sit and wait for Art and I to get there. Yeah. And That's we can thought. do it. Yeah. yeah. So, 
or it was a non-elimination, and which has happened on the Amazing Race before in the first the the first uh, leg, and we would just take a penalty and start over. Right? Wow! So you had a lot so, going through your mind. A lot. Those are really yeah. yeah that, those I'd are love viable. to hear that because those are three good reasons to take that penalty. And just be like, yeah, because yeah. people ask me after, you know, why did you do it? Like other racers mm-hmm. at, at the end, why did you do that? And I tried to articulate, but no one really could. I guess until you were there and see it. So I was strategically yeah. trying to place us. I knew he couldn't do it, right? I knew it. And and what I don't know if it showed because obviously I didn't see it, but um, it started to rain. So oh, you know, on no, it top didn't show. Of, oh, yeah, yeah we didn't so see on that. top of all that, it, it kind of rained, and that's why we had jackets on. Mm. So so now that inflatable raft was like a greased pig, you know, <laughs> and yeah. it was just – it was like – I. Could it get any worse? Maybe some lightning come <laughs> and explode the whole thing and kill Art, and we'd be on the show anyway. That would be the only worst thing that could happen. So, um, you know, it's and and that's the thing. I think um, being on the race, and my wife used to say this to me, and and because uh, my wife was uh, a Hollywood actress and very successful oh, nice. in a lot of the reality world too, and she mm-hmm. would tell me, "You need to talk to other racers because." Even though I can understand a little bit what you're talking about, I can't understand the the, the totality of everything you've been through. And yeah. I think until somebody like you've been on Big Brother, and mm-hmm. if somebody has not done that, right. um, it's you can try to articulate it a little bit, but nobody's really going to get the what totally encompasses doing the Amazing Race. Yeah. It's um, it's yeah. very grueling and it's exciting and it's everything that I've always. It yeah. encompasses everything in life that I love, competition, travel, mm-hmm. um, doing something extraordinary. Uh, so it was um, – It. I have great memories and I know, you know, when bad things happen in life, it kind of – as time fades away, it, it kind of just goes away too and then you just have great memories. And, yeah. Yeah. and season 20 had that disastrous end. But my mm-hmm. God, I there's days where – I'll just be doing, I'll just be with my son at the skate park or, or going to the beach and hanging out and, and just a memory that I didn't even, I didn't even remember that happened yeah. will pop into my head that I did on the amazing race. It just makes me smile and, and I feel proud to be part of, part of something. So people have been asking me something, uh, uh, something that I use that I talked about before yeah. because I, I'm not like you. I can't just read through a book that's like 300 pages. Yeah. I hate doing that. And I only like to read like nonfiction stuff. True. So what the thing is that I use is called Blinkist. Mm-hmm. So it's an app and it basically condenses down uh, like the best key takeaways, the need to know information from like thousands of nonfiction books. And it puts them down to just like 15 minutes so you can read it. Or listen to it. Yeah. So for me, it's like perfect for like my drives, my long drives to work or, you know, things like that where I can just click it, listen to it. And it's only 15 minutes. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I can listen to like four books <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in like one drive, which is awesome. And, and there's like four million people using Blinkist right now. And it has a massive and growing library from self-help, business, health to history, which is one of my favorites. Um, and one of the ones that uh, I said I was, uh, and I already listened to it now, is The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really cool. It's like the 10 reasons we're wrong about the world and why things are better than you think. Uh, so really good stuff. That's so cool. right now for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer uh, just for our listeners. You go to Blinkist.com slash Coco and you can start your free seven-day wow. trial. So you can see if you like it. F-R-E-E. <laughs> so that's Blinkist. That's spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T. Uh, dot com slash coco c o c o uh, for that seven day uh, free trial. Try it out. You know, but that was funny too, Victor. I was before you called. I was thinking how 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 unique or strange it is that two guys uh, are on the amazing race together at the and we're from the exact same place. Um, you went to Salmon High School. Yeah, right? oh, yeah, yeah, Salmon, I did. yeah, and then I went to Pearl River High School. No way, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's and those are two. We used to be rivals. I mean, yeah. we're, you and I are a little bit different in age. So yeah. at the time when I was in high school, it was a rivalry. It still, and, yeah, and, uh, it still was. I remember going to play football and soccer against them and everything. And yeah, and there, you guys oh, are in yeah. the back country. Uh, yeah, in the back country. I know. Yeah, <laughs> it, <laughs> we were. Yeah, so I left my. 
I went to a, a school there called Pope John Paul II. Yeah, uh, yep. Yeah, it's a Christian private, a Catholic really private school. Really good football and, school, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I left there to go play at Pearl River, and, and what a uh, what a different culture from both of those. And <laughs> but it was a great year, and I loved it. And and uh, but I'm glad to be out of the the heat, humidity, yep. and mosquitoes, and, <laughs> and flying cockroaches, and and being in San Diego where it's. 65, 70 oh, all yeah, year round. So it's great. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> sounds amazing. Um, yeah, it's great. We wanted to bring up uh, how they completely skipped out on learning Japanese in that tour bus. Well, they just, oh, yeah. my God. And how stressful that. that was. I was writing it down. I was like, we're done, Vic. Like, we're never going to make it. I know. Because, we, you know, we get out of the airport and we, we race to the um, to the bus. And then, you know, they have uh, a guy there from, trying to teach us Japanese as we're driving through to, <laughs> to Tokyo yeah. and we're all, everyone is, is, you know, feverishly writing down what he's saying. And I'm thinking in my head, Oh my God, this is going to be some kind of word challenge. And yeah. I turned to Art and I said, Art, you're going to have to do this because I have no idea what he's talking about. Because <laughs> Art's, bi- Art's bilingual and I'm figuring, oh, okay. Hey man, something, yeah. something can translate and, and I, to you and you know your, your verbal skills he's like no i don't think i can do it i go we're doomed we're doomed <laughs> that's how i because, felt and, too yeah because you're writing down and, yes. it has, and of course the japanese has no uh correlation right. to the english language no. and, and, and i'm just like oh my god i can't believe we're doing this and we're riding on that bumpy bus on the top deck and we're trying to write and and my penmanship, and I'm, I can't even read what I wrote. I was like, oh my gosh. He was so, so frightened. The guy's like, okay, you guys got that one? No, repeat it. <laughs> yeah, the poor guy. How do you spell it? <laughs> Say it slower. I, I know, and, and it was just, it was crazy. And, and that's a, we had been to, to Japan uh, in the season 20, and, and that was our, our second to last leg. And, and I remember it's just a unique culture. It's very, yeah. very different. Mm-hmm. It's in, um, but wow, is it chaotic and, yeah. and trying to get through those streets and, and in places and buildings that you would, you look kind of from afar and think, God, the lights aren't even on, on that building. Yeah. And you know, and then that's uh-huh. where you had to go and end up. And, uh, it's unique. And I think that's, what's great about the amazing race is you, you could go to, to Japan a million times and mm-hmm. are you going to go and bite chocolate sandals? Right. I mean, exactly. it, it's, you're not, you're never going to do that, uh-huh. you know? So, um, and I think that's, what's so special about it is, is what, um, what both Elise and Bertram, the, the creators and yeah. directors of the, they do and, and they run a first class and I have nothing but respect and yeah, admiration for, sure. for those two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it was a, it was such a cool ex- like it's just a cool experience and for when you guys got the call back was that something you were expecting kind of like to get called back for like an all star or because you're you're a super fan of the show I've seen so I've seen a couple episode or a couple seasons but how many like all star seasons has there been I think there's um, well. Sometimes they would call us this the All Star season also. So I think there was, oh, okay. if I'm not mistaken, this is the the fourth. So they did one, I think, on eleven, and then then I want to say eighteen. I could oh, be okay. wrong. Okay. And then so when they did the last uh, All Stars mm-hmm. was God, it had been like 2014, and we were called and oh. we went through the whole process, and then we were cut at the end oh, and that no was way. devastating yeah it was like oh wow. my we're gonna do this again and we're gonna you know blah 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 and then they mm-hmm. whacked us at the end and we were devastated so when we got a call this time it was around march mm-hmm. and uh they said hey would you want to do it and we're like and they knew the answer it was like <laughs> yeah. of course you know art and i would if we came out of the beach with flip-flops and yeah. shorts on we would just get on the plane like that and yeah. go. Aww, so yeah. And they called us, and then they went through the process, and uh, you know they they're pretty much secretive. They don't tell you everything that's going on. And right. then they called and said, "Hey, I hate to do this, but we're going to put you on an alternate list. We're not going to put you on the main cast." Oh wow! But will for you this, still be interested for this for season? this one? Yeah, that for happened what, to us you, as well. Yeah, we were alternates. Yeah. yeah, we were alternates as Last, well. We, we got had, four. We got four days' notice. Yes, that was us. I remember on the Friday <laughs> night. Um, the, the casting director, Lynn, mm-hmm. who's wonderful, called and said, okay, you're in. 
And I was like, oh, my God, we're in. <laughs> and then I need you. We're picking you up on Tuesday morning at such. I was like, get out of here. This yeah. is insane. <laughs> so I had to take, I had to call. And Art and I had to go all the way through our chain of command to our chief. Oh, chief yeah, Scott, your work. You know, and get, and he's wonderful. And he said, yes, just go do it. And, awesome. And, uh, <laughs> Excuse me, and then it was just a mad dash for like two or three days to yep. get life in order, <laughs> get clothes that I need to wear to go because you don't they don't tell you you know right. hot or cold yeah and um because the last time we were on season twenty we were in freezing freezing conditions in mm. in Austria and Germany where it was snowing and, oh, and wow. blizzards and, and they had a, they had a, a change part of it uh, mm-hmm. because we got snow drifted in and and then. <laughs> And then I'm in India and it's at 8,000 degrees and you're sweating through <laughs> your clothes. So you don't even know what, you don't right. even know what to bring. Right. Yeah. So, um, it, it was, it was a whirlwind mm. and, uh, but it, it was great. It was great to be a part of it again. And, and, uh, just to go through the whole thing, uh, from, you know, from getting cast to, to be on the starting line. And we just didn't, it, for whatever reason, it just didn't pan out for us, uh, mm-hmm. the way we thought it would. But, um, somebody asked me the other day, would you, just, would you have just been ha- more happy, uh, or relieved to not even doing it? And I said, no, because that's not life. Yeah. Life is, yeah. if you want to do something great and mm-hmm. achieve something great, then there, you have, you, you have to try it. And then, yeah. And you have to have the acknowledgement that their failure is is they say failure is not an option, but it is an option. It right. is something that is that could occur. And I, when I'm 80 years old and and uh, hopefully have grandchildren, I don't want to look back and think, you know, I should have done this or should have yeah. tried that. Even if I failed, I'd be like, at least I tried. At yeah, least exactly. I was, I was in the game. You know, yes. I was in the game and and had a shot. Mm-hmm. And um, Mm-hmm. As you get older, and I know I'm older than you guys, and what? But, yeah, just a little bit. I think by about two or three years. But you know, a, as you get older, you 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 try to minimize your regret, right? You don't, yeah. You, anyone who says you at the end of their life they don't have any regret, I I, I think that has to be a, f- a full on lie mm-hmm. because you are going to do things in your life that you're going to be like, gosh, I really shouldn't have said that or done that or yeah. treated that person that way, and. Yeah. And as you get older, you want to minimize those those mm-hmm. moments of those regrets. And mm-hmm. so I don't regret uh, having the, the ultimate failure in front of people and 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 the yeah. and the show the emotion and and all that because I want to live life and and part of life mm-hmm. is is failure sometimes and yes. and as hard as gut wrenching it is to go through it, it's just. It's something you got to do. And and, it's, some, uh, it's very relatable. People go through this all the time, you know, yeah. and it's just watch hearing you talk about it and just like accept it. It's very motivating and inspiring. So yeah. thank 100%. you. Yeah. This was a really great talk with you. Yeah. I, well, I, thank you. Yeah. We got to learn more about you now than we did when we were <laughs> in, yeah, it's in, so quick. in California <laughs> and Japan. I, I know it's so hard because when you can, if you can get through the race the whole way, you really, you'll, we all get uh, build bonds and yeah. and um, that you would normally never do. Maybe mm. even a course of a lifetime because yeah. it's right. so unique experience and what yeah. you can get through um, and and you take away from it. And mm-hmm. uh, so it, it's a great experience. But I appreciate mm-hmm. the time to, to be able to talk to you about it and mm-hmm. uh, and hopefully get a little insight yeah, into what sure. why we did what we did in the end. And, yeah. And. Uh, and just say prayers for poor Art. He's got to yeah, just yeah. eat this, and and uh, but uh, it's good. It's yeah. it's all right. You'll cool. get better with time. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, thank you so much. Uh, yes, thank for, you. For, this was awesome. Yeah, yeah. You're our first guest for like the Amazing Race uh, episodes, <laughs> and everyone's super excited to listen. And you nailed it. Yes, no, you did. Oh, that's good great. job. Well, thanks, guys, yeah. and good luck this season. I look for. I'll, I'll start watching it again and, <laughs> and see everything I missed, and be cheering you guys on. See thanks how so you much. Up, okay. All right, yeah. All right, thanks, all right you guys. Take care. Thanks, thanks. for the opportunity. Yep, all, right. all right, man. Bye. All right, bye bye. So I love companies that give back and Oh yeah. Yeah. So Third Love is a company that I really like. Not only do they have products, so they have bras and they have um like uh underwear that are super comfortable with elastic bands. But um over 12 million have women have taken this quiz to find the perfect bra because I learned also that the quiz is like shape of 
your boob because oh <laughs> yeah no it matters and like no one else no other quiz like defines that like specific breast types right so it's a hundred percent fit guarantee so every customer has 60 days to wear it wash it put it to the test if you don't love it you can return it and third love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need and i just find that so freaking awesome that is really really cool they have fit stylists they're always available via text chat or phone um the comfort is amazing the quality is great there are straps that won't slip um, tagless labels, lightweight, super thin memory, and their new thing is breathable cotton bras. Okay. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash coco now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash coco for 15% off today. It's Make recording now. <laughs> Okay, so we just literally had a really good discussion Art. with Art, and he didn't hit, Victor did not hit record. I feel so stupid. This is, I I feel so bad. I'm so sorry, Art. You don't have to be sorry. Lucky for you, I was I had fun talking to you guys, so we'd do it all over again. Oh my gosh, that's, oh, he's lucky, because I was like. Nicole, Art, you should have seen Nicole just now. She she was like, I got I to gotta walk away. <laughs> And, and she just went into the living room and she's like, well, what do you want to do about this? I feel oh, I, I hit my low my point. My, my heart dropped to my anus. I'll tell you what. Nah, it's, it's all good, man. So oh, see, okay. I told you, you guys can call back anytime. Yeah, you did. You're so sweet. Okay. So right. well, we won't like keep you as long this time. No, but okay. like, uh, we'll, we'll just go, we'll just go through it quick. Like, uh, what we were saying, like how, how you were feeling, you know, when, you couldn't make it up and your body just shutting down on you. Like, mm -hmm. what was that like? So it, like I said, it was just, it's one of those things where I've never, I've never experienced my body like give out on me, mm -hmm. you know, where, where I was physically unable to do something. And it just, at that point in time, you know, I was, I'm like, what's going on? I go, I've never, I've never had my body not do what I want it to do. And then, you know, I just get to thinking and I, in the grand scheme of life and everything else and stuff. And yeah, it's a race and we got booted and, 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 you know, we didn't make it through and, and because of that, but then I'm like, you know, there's so many other people in the world that deal with stuff on a daily basis yeah. and that's yeah. their life, you know, and they have no control over mm -hmm. their body and they have no control over the circumstances that happen to them. And they, they figure out, they make it work and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? It just, it was, it was a little bit of an eye opening thing for me mm -hmm. to be like, you know what, you need to take care of yourself. You need to work through stuff. You need to, you, I yeah, don't know, yeah. it's not a self pity thing, but it's just like, you know, it was like, holy shit, you know, look, <laughs> look around and, and basically, yeah. you know, if you see somebody that, that, that is, that needs help physically or, or whatever, you know, help them out, man. I mean, yeah. you don't know what they're going through. And so for mm -hmm. me, like that, that kind of opened up a little bit. You know, not to say that it's debilitating to the point, but you know, like you see these stuff like the ALS challenge, and and, yeah. and you know, yeah. got a father-in-law that's dealing with Parkinson's and just stuff like that, where you know, it's like the mind's there, but you're 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 physically unable to do something. I'm like, damn, you finally you know, felt that. that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, because it just, I mean, you see it, and, yeah. but you don't really, it, it it didn't really click, and and okay, yeah, so it came down to a leg cramp for me, but. That leg cramp, I couldn't have done anything. I think, right. and I was, and I told JJ, I'm like, dude, even if we would have made it through that thing, mm -hmm. I don't know how much longer I could have gone because it took me probably three days to be able to get up and walk wow. after that. Oh, geez, yeah. I, it wasn't. It wasn't just that at mm -hmm. that point in time. Like walking up the stairs to fill at the at the uh, end of that leg. Mm -hmm. I was looking at those stairs and I'm like, I, I couldn't walk up the stairs. I'm like, how am I going to get up this thing? Oh my yeah. god! And then once we got there. I mean, I literally was laid up for a good three days. I could not move. My legs were, they kept cramping up. They kept, and I was like, oh, this is going to be insane. And I, mm -hmm. and I told him, I go, dude, you know what? I think even if we would have made it, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what I'm, I don't know how we, I would have been able to keep going on. I right. mean, unless that I, you know, I'm just absolutely stretching and, and eating bananas and yeah. you know, <laughs> drinking, drinking mustard or doing whatever I have yeah. to do. But Probably. they were, they 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 hurt for a good good three days and I I, I literally couldn't get up I, I mean I couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom they hurt so bad <laughs> oh I mean, my it was, gosh it was, it was that bad and I, like I said I've never had that happen to me 
Yeah, because that, that's not how it was, you know, portrayed. It looked like you had a really bad cramp, but nobody would ever yeah, guess that it would be three days later and yeah. you're still, you know. Yeah, I know. And, and again, if, you know, if we would have kept going on, mm-hmm. it, I think that eventually would have come out because I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. And like I was saying before, what people don't see is that, that once the leg starts, there's no break from when we left California running mm-hmm. down the pier in the sand to the taxis mm-hmm. and, you know, you're sitting in the stiff seat in the airplane. For like 14 for, hours. Yeah, yes. for like 14 hours. It's not like, it's not all sunshines and rainbows, you know, mm-hmm. like that leg is, you're still in the race, you know, so right. you're, you're hustling and you guys were running in, in like Tokyo for like two or three hours before you guys Easy. even got over there. Yeah. And, and then, you know, they didn't, they didn't show any of that stuff. So it was just, mm-hmm. you know, people that always ask are like, well, what's the hardest thing you did? And I'm like, you know, if you, you have to be able to do everything on a tail end of jet lag. So yes. you're basically in a constant state of jet lag for the, the, the entirety of the race, yep. mm-hmm. you know? So, and you have to basically always, you're always thinking, you always have to be on your game mm-hmm. when you're in jet lag. And I go, and that's when mistakes happen. And that's when things don't work. And that's when you don't think about stuff. And, you know, for me already being exhausted to the point where I was at, once we walked out of that tent, you know, I just ran straight through a mud field to begin with. So right. by the time I got to the thing, I was already soaking wet. So, I mean, as soon as I stepped onto that, stupid jumpy jump thing (laughs) and i'm like what in the world how you know i just but it's it's again it's that it's that dealing with exhaustion not thinking about what you need to do to make something because Mm -hmm. i looked at it i'm like oh this is easy i can do this this is like you know doing one of the school fairs or whatever yeah but then i'm like "Uh uh-oh you know and then after I, i just stopped and i couldn't do it anymore and then i saw rupert walk out and he had his shoes on and he walks all the way up and he takes his shoes i'm like Really? I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like, come on. And he just walked right up the thing. I'm like, well, of course he walked up the thing. He wasn't soaking in mud up to his knee yeah. by the time he got to it. Yeah. So. And was it, was it crazy seeing that Rupert and Laura got lost for like two hours yeah. and something like away from where the competition <sighs> like, was? Did you think you were the last ones like doing the competition when you were doing it before you saw Rupert and Laura? Or did you know? I we Well, I mean, when they told us that when we said that we were going to take the penalty, mm-hmm. they're like, okay, well, it doesn't start until the last or till the next team shows up. And then we're like, wait, oh. there's another team still out there. <laughs> we were just going to say, oh, we'll take the penalty. And they're like, okay, well, you guys are dumb. But they're like, okay, well, it does, just so you know, it doesn't start until the next team shows up as opposed to from the time that we declared we were going to take the penalty. Yeah, and that's and I what like, I didn't what? know. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. Then when they told us that, we kind of knew that somebody was out there. We didn't know who it was. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, I yeah. tough tough call. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so when 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 you guys do get uh, eliminated, like I, I like what you said earlier about you know. Yeah. Too bad it wasn't recording. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ha, 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 ha. No, but like what you were saying, like when they asked you about being second and being out first, you yeah, know? Like right. comparing the two. Right. So like I, that when we were doing our exit interviews and, and they're like, hey, so now you're you're you know, you've come in second place and now you've been first team eliminated. How's that feel? And like I was like, I go, I don't think there's any team in the history of the amazing race that could claim those two awesome accolades. Right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I go, but, you know, I, I told him I, co- I compared it to to getting bit by a rattlesnake or mm-hmm. getting bit by a great white shark. I mean, they both suck. They both hurt. And you're probably going to die regardless, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you're going to have, or you're going to have at least a really nasty scar. Yeah. So, but for us, I think that the being eliminated first was way worse now experiencing it than, than coming in second place. Mm-hmm. Cause at least in second place, you got to run the race you got to do all the things. You got to meet all the people. Yeah. You got you have all those experiences, and mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there's still stuff that I that I think about, and talk about to this day that we got to do towards the very end of the race, to where now it was like we went to Japan, mm-hmm. and that was it. You know, we yeah. didn't we didn't get to go and do any other cool stuff that that that's involved with the race and, 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 and just even interacting with the people, you know, yeah. interacting with Bertram and, and, and Elise and production and, and right. just all the cast people and the camera guys and the sound guys. And, you know, those guys are amazing and, and, and doing all the running and, and all the gear they have to keep up with you and, and do all it, it just, I mean, I still am friends with, with, with camera and sound guys from, 
season 20. Yeah. You know, oh, I wow. just, you know, mm-hmm. th- those are just relationships and friendships that you built because mm-hmm. you just, those guys are with you doing mm-hmm. all the stuff that you're doing. And then you do something wrong and they're yelling at you and you're like, oh, get back here. You're dead. So, yeah. you, know, just, <laughs> they, the, you know, it was just stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, to me, that's, that's the relationship part of it because I mean, you know, we know Rachel, we know Rachel forever and, mm-hmm. and just got to meet her sister. And, you know, so it, it was just kind of like, I never really got to talk to Colin and Christy much, but you know, yeah. they were the other race team and, and Jamal and Leo and so, and, and, and team fun. And so, I mean, even just like the race people just wanted to get to know them better and their stories about their seasons and then yeah. the survivor yeah. people and the big brother people. And, you know, so it's just, it, it, it just, it's just those relationships that just, we didn't get to foster. So that, that, that's kind of the bummer part of it too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I like the fact that you brought up about the camera guy and the sound guy, cause holy job do they have to, mm-hmm. we're running like maniacs all over the place and they're right there with the, the whole the time. time. I mean, how much is that with, camera away? Yeah, with an entire camera kit and mm-hmm. audio kit and all this other stuff. It's like, yeah, wow. And, you know, and, and so, you know, we're running with, with our backpacks and, and the stuff that we have on. And, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say that their gear probably weighs twice as much, yeah. Yeah. you know, easy. And, but these guys, these guys are phenomenal, man. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just, they're just, they're just, it's just really, it's just a really well put together production yeah. that, you know, they just, they've, they've nailed it down. And it's been, it's for me, it's just that, that's the part that I miss of it because it was just, it was really, and it was, I mean, even, you know, coming back seven years later we still see the same guys you know yeah. they're a little bit older yeah. but they're still the same guys doing the same thing and then i was like man these guys are still doing it you know it's kind of cool <laughs> um and so uh let's touch back again on on when you get eliminated and where you go like uh right where, where do they send you and, and what's that experience like so they said you to sequester and you and you basically it's some obscure place somewhere on this planet, you know, that you have absolutely <laughs> no contact that, that, you know, where you're going to be. Nobody's going to know who you are. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't, you know, most of the time you don't understand. I, I, I would assume most of the time you don't understand the language since this is our first time being going to sequester. So yeah. <laughs> and you just you're just there, man. And then you just kind of. You know, you sit around and, and then you wait for other people to show up and mm-hmm. and you start commiserating in your in your misery and, and <laughs> you know, you're just you're uh, just kind of like what if everything to death until the, we end up back at uh, End City. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's uh, that has to be tough, but hey, that's the other experience that as a person that got to do it all. Now you know what everybody experiences, right? You know, Absolutely. The, you know, the full scope of, uh, yeah. <laughs> of what can happen. Right. Um, yeah, I do. So hopefully if they ever, if they ever like say, Hey, we're going to do an amazing race of all second place winners yeah. or all first eliminated teams. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Hey, there you go. <laughs> we, just, we just doubled our chances. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, Hey, thank you for yeah. recapping. <laughs> with us i'm so sorry that i did not record the first time but uh you're you're a trooper and it it was it was tough to see you in pain and and not be able to do it because you know we all have that fighter in us it's like just push through and Mm -hmm. if you can't you know it's there's nothing else you can do Uh, thanks man i appreciate it and and the thing is they only showed me cramping up for like 10 seconds i was like yeah no i I was cramping up there for a good 45 minutes but they got 10 seconds of it (laughs) and they're like really you just gotta cramp and you stop i'm like yeah no that's not the way it happened (laughs) you know whatever they don't have enough air time uh available (laughs) and at least you got a teammate you know that that uh he feels for you he's not just he's not just like angry and bitter he's more like man and, you know, so I feel bad yeah. for Art, and you're like, oh, I let him down. He's like, no, you know, you're going through stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? So you guys have each other for Good that. Which, how long have you guys been friends? Um, I don't know, about maybe seven, eight, nine years, maybe. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah about there. Mm-hmm. So it was. Uh, we I, I first met him when when I went to go work on the coast, and you know, he was a supervisor there, and I was basically a watch commander, and. You know, so we started working together and we went, we got through a lot of stuff working together and just kind of like, Hey, you want to do this? I'm like, really, bro? He's like, let's do it. I'm like, Why not? Oh, it was, it was his idea. Oh yeah. It was his idea. Totally yeah. his idea. Because he said he's a super fan. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I thought you said he was going to say he was Superman. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, that's but funny. yeah, no, it's you know what, man. If 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 the the cool thing about doing it with a buddy or whatever, like my wife and I, I don't know if we if I I don't know if I would want her to go through that mm-hmm. with me or me go through it with her because I would never want to see her like in pain or disappointed yeah. or you know, and, and I just put her through that kind of of. I just, I, I wouldn't want that for her. at least mm-hmm. doing it with a buddy. It's kind of like, you know, and then it, if we get disappointed, we get disappointed, but it doesn't ruin our relationship or friendship or whatever. I mean, cause if, if that kind of stuff gets in between somebody's relationship, you know, then it's like, well, then why even bother doing it? You know, yeah. I mean, if anything, you know, it should, it should bring you closer together as right. people and friends or whatever, mm-hmm. as opposed to ripping you apart because, you know, you didn't compete in that and you didn't win a game you know a reality tv show right. or something that's yeah. just crazy to me right. yeah that's what's so. you know nicole and i got lucky it brought us closer right but it and, that, and it i think that's worse. what it should yeah yeah no it could have but i mean i think that's what that kind of experience should do you know i think it mm-hmm. should bring people closer together and not rip people apart because of whatever so exactly you know yeah. well, so unless good. unless that that bond is there before going into this thing Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would have second thoughts about doing it. Yeah. So, that's well, just me. Hey, fair enough. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, well, again, thank you. Uh, again, I can't <laughs> stress how much of an idiot I feel not recording the whole it, first time, but uh, we got you on and hey, uh, check us out. You know, we'll, we'll let you know when this episode yeah, we'll airs. Yeah, we'll send you and, like and a we'll little you... link to everything. Oh, and we, have and we some, got a little picture of you Yeah, drawn we have some and... art for you. It's like cartoon art, drawing. Art for art. Art for All art. Right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, but thank you so much. Enjoy your vacation. Right. I heard the birds chirping in the background. It must be beautiful. <laughs> you got it, guys. <laughs> All right, bye. 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 Welcome back to Coco Caliente. Hello, hello, hello. We just uh, got done with... Uh, Art and JJ. Yeah, super nice awesome. guys. We didn't get to really know them, um, which sucks because they're so cool. Yeah, yeah. You just um, don't have the time. I know. Even when you're like racing, you just, no matter where you are, because they said like when they were in like essentially the jury house, but loser's camp is what Art said they <laughs> called it. <laughs> yeah. um, you like build bonds there and then you, you build bonds on the race regardless of where you are, but it's kind of like... It's a weird situation for both. He described this was cut out um, because we forgot to record arts segment, but he described it as like everyone's kind of miserable. So then you just kind of feed off of each other Mm -hmm. and then, you know, and then like for people on the race, it's kind of like you're always in game mode. Like, do you do you have time to talk Do you? So it's just it's weird. It's not like Big Brother because you don't even. Like watching that first segment, there's no downtime. We didn't see anybody. I didn't know what was going on with anybody else. So it was really cool to get the insight, even on the penalty, because us as just viewers and not talking to them about it. Um, JJ made great points on why he, which was a lot of, we got that question several times on the Coco Caliente DM. Yeah. Um, do they regret doing the penalty? And as JJ is a super fan, he had three reasons why he thought the penalty could help them. And that's really good insight. Yeah. And art that, you know, he, it wasn't just a minor cramp. I mean, he was three days, three days. Yeah. He yeah. <laughs> so, and it just looked like, Oh cramp. Like, could he get over it? And it's like yeah. three days he couldn't walk and go to the bathroom. So <laughs> no, I don't think that was it wasn't minor but a couple questions um we'll answer that i went through um the dms and we got a lot of questions but these were the most common Mm -hmm. so did you guys get lost after the slide because it said you were in fourth place and then you finished in sixth and it didn't show anything between that oh yeah so yeah explain kind of what happened there so nicole finished in first try amazing and we we went to go find where we had to go next where the clue Mm -hmm. said we found this taxi and we told them to take us and in little words because we can't understand the language he was essentially telling us to walk it's close by right so us first time racers we thought oh it's like right here we we don't need to take a taxi yeah so we we um we just decided to walk and wander, <laughs> got lost for probably like 30 minutes, yeah. decided to grab another taxi. And the other taxi actually didn't take us to the right entrance, <laughs> right? He took us to another, the right place, but wrong entrance point. And he kicked us out of the taxi. He was not happy. I don't know if it was because of the camera guys that we had with us all cramped up or whatever, but we got kicked out. Mm-hmm. And But he left us at the top of the steps. 
And so we had to go all the way down the steps. Because the clue said you had to enter through the red gate. Exactly. So we just knew to not even not try even to try. get away with it. Go all the way down the steps, which I don't know if it really showed how steep they were, but we climbed back up. I mean, I crawled. Mm-hmm. And Vic had to carry my backpack. And um, yeah, it, it was, was intense. really intense. And Vic <laughs> actually had a cramp at the mat. My legs cramped up 100%. And that, that yeah, that's why I kept kind of like bending down and stuff. And they're like, Victor, yeah. can you please stand straight up? And I'm like, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, it cramped at the mat, though. Yeah. Had it been before, we could have been, in, I couldn't drag you. Okay. So, another question Did Victor have to bite down on the same sandals as other people? Yeah. So, and you're a germaphobe. So, this is a great question. Yeah. No, it is kind of nasty to think about. But after you bite the sandal, they put it right back. So, easily other people can, you know, get yeah. that same sandal. So, yes, sometimes you would get it and there'd be teeth marks in there. And you have to bite on And you have to bite on it anyway. It's just the rules of the yeah. game. And so, yeah. Nah, it's kind of nasty, but yeah, that's what we had Good to do. Good question. I never thought of that, but I don't get grossed out too easily. But I did gag on the chocolate, which was a lot of people questioning that. It wasn't <laughs> gross or anything. It's just my nerves. I can't, I can't eat. Like I didn't, wouldn't eat before exams or whenever there's something like crazy going on. I just, I can't eat. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was that whole concept of, oh my god. Like right now, I already want to Ralph. I've been in this situation you watching you bite 42 or whatever sandals yeah. it, 43 sandals whatever it was um and then now i have to eat this chocolate and yeah. i mean we did it and it was it was thick and yeah. it, it was great chocolate though. no it was really good chocolate it was just a lot we probably hadn't eaten several hours so. yeah <laughs> you would think we'd just garf it down easy yeah. um <laughs> and then and the last thing was so there's pictures out there of us like pulling down kites on hermosa beach that are in shapes of jellyfish this part got cut because um, I'm guessing because the prize was never used. It was like an advantage in the game, and the team who won it um, didn't use it. So they kind of cut that. But that tell us a little about that, Vic. Yeah, so basically uh, the actual first part, uh, what Phil told us, is you got to run in, you got to grab your clue, and then you have to go to the jellyfish and mm-hmm. find this you know, advantage in the game. Like there's a ribbon that you're like, looking yeah, for. Yeah, you have to pull down the, the jellyfish, and in there somewhere is you know, is, is the, the advantage. And we did that for like 25 minutes running from mm-hmm. uh, you know, jellyfish to jellyfish. They were spread out pretty far wide. And so that was actually really exhausting. It took a lot of time and energy, um, and it didn't make it into the show. Right. (laughs) Yeah, so I think it's kind of crazy how um, Art also touched on this. I'm not sure if it was the first or second time. Um, So if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. But how, like, the most exhausting parts of the race, always doing everything in jet lag, it's not shown, like cramped up on the um, airplane for 14, 16 hours, eating only airplane food, mm-hmm. um, running on the sand multiple times all over the place. Running in getting downtown lost, Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, for hours getting lost in the airport even. Mm-hmm. like It's crazy because, I mean, some people just look like they have it together. They got their makeup together. They got their eyelashes together. They got you know, yeah. their composure or whatever. And me, I'm just like waking up with the side marks on my face and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I feel nauseous and I'm jet lagged. So it's just kind of whatever you make of it, but you're always, your body's always ready to go because you know you have to. And you always have extra weight. You always yeah. have extra weight. You always have that freaking backpack, mm-hmm. you know, with your stuff that you need, yeah. right? But gosh, that just, that takes a toll. I mean, my... I, I lost 15 pounds myself yeah. and through the course of the race, you know, mm-hmm. like it's insane. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And then also Art said that he lost four pounds in like where where their house was. <laughs> and so that was like his positive thing, of like getting eliminated <laughs> early. I thought that was cute. All right. So today, instead of Spanish word of the day, we're going to do Japanese word of the day mm. because we were obviously in Tokyo, Japan. Mm-hmm. And this word we learned, uh, I don't know if we touched on this, uh, actually this got cut out. So when we got to Japan and we had to get on the bus to go to Tokyo, yeah. we- We talked about that with uh, JJ. Oh, with JJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had to write all this stuff down. So one of the words we learned was yama. Yama? Yama. Oh, crap. You remember that one a little yama. bit? Yama. No, I remember like park. I remember the shoe store. Yama. Yama. How do I spell that? Y-A-M-A, I believe. But that 
I mean, that's irrelevant because it's a Japanese word, so it would be... No, I know, but I'm, I, am, I write stuff down and I remember. Oh, oh maybe you wrote llama. <laughs> oh, yeah, I might have. Yama. It doesn't mean park. It does not mean park. And it doesn't mean shoes. It does not mean shoes. Okay, and what does it mean? And it, mind you, it's something that we did in the race, so it is part of the race. Oh, mountain! Yeah, yeah I remember now. Yama means mountain. Yes, because I was like, I we were like pretending like I had to climb the Yama. <laughs> okay, oh, well, there we go. You got it. There you I go. I got it. Okay, so we're gonna still do our weird or normal segment, but it's not gonna really relate to the show. At least this time it won't, just because we had one in in the making already that we wanted to. No, we forgot to do last time. We forgot to do last time. Yes. So for this weird or normal, I think it's really weird that Nicole really, really likes and is infatuated with pickled things, pickled carrots, pickled, I don't know, asparagus, asparagus eggs, pic- my favorite is cauliflower, Ugh. Um, green beans, all this pickled. And I, you think for me, it's just a smell. Yeah. Like, have you really given it a try? Yeah, because I like, I like normal pickles, yeah. right? Like just on like yeah. on a burger or something, but I just can't think about eating like a pickled asparagus or yeah, or- I eat them by the by the jars. And I remember in my HOH basket, I asked for pickled eggs, but that was just like vinegar and something. It wasn't like a midwestern pickled egg. There's like mustard pickled eggs that are uh. really good, mustard garlic or. Oh my gosh, you guys, my mouth is salivating. Yeah, and then is that how we'll, you say that? Salivating? Yeah, salivating. But then when she does that, then she'll like, eat the I whole. can't even, yeah, she'll eat the whole thing and I can't even kiss her. I can't smell her fingers. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, if she touches something else, I'm like, babe, wash your hands. Like, I, Do you guys like pickled things like that? <sighs> I don't know, but even when I was younger growing up, the gas stations around here, you could get the pickled egg out of the jar for like 50 cents and I always... Did it? Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's just, I can't. I just, uh-huh. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way it looks. Yeah. It looks like, you know what it, You know what pickled things look like sometimes, especially eggs? Don't it, ruin it for me, but what? It looks like a science experiment. Mm-hmm. Like when you walk into a, a lab mm-hmm. and they got like something floating yeah. in the water, you I know? I feel like you either love them or hate them. And I absolutely hate them. And it, but it's great because then I get the whole jar to myself. But like it, probably in our turnaround right now, turnaround cupboard, we have like 14 jars of pickle things waiting to be open and probably have four or five in the fridge. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really bad. Oh, man. I love it. If that was a competition, I'd dominate. <gasps> yeah, like eat the pickled eggs. Oh, I would throw up if it was my I, – I would do it and I would just be so pissed Is this a Midwestern time. thing? It has to be. I don't know. Or I mean, is it's it a, just uh, abnormal? Like some people I, – I think it's a country thing because they do it in the south and too. We make it our, and we make some stuff ourselves. Yeah. So um, from like the garden and all that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining in with us today, you guys. Um, we are – really excited about this show like we didn't know how we would feel with it coming out because it's just been so long yeah and and we're just really excited and so we really want to embrace it and give you guys what you guys want so let us know um not on the review page if you don't like it but like (laughs) (laughs) always review positively please if you're a listener thank you so much but yeah dm us Mm -hmm. like nicole's saying let us know how we can make it better we might come up with like a segment something different that can pertain to the race so if you have any ideas let us know because this is new for us too and we we take any you know any advice you know yeah and uh thanks so much and subscribe rate review um you can follow us at coco caliente podcast on instagram coco caliente podcast.com is our website and has all the episodes as well you can listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts on itunes spotify what else Vic? stitcher google play <laughs> yeah uh you can also follow us on twitter at coco caliente pod mm-hmm. um and nicole did a great job on the outro yeah that was Good like just job, i just baby. ran with it uh, confidence is key yeah that's <laughs> awesome that's awesome thank you guys mm-hmm.